Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. So today, I have made a couple of things over the past weeks towards uh, Pearl Cannons, especially in 1.12. Uh, so it's mainly these three, three, sorry, these three things that I was recently working on, uh, and I thought I should just publish them all in one video because it didn't really make sense to do them in separate ones. Uh, over there with just me designing it, by the way. Okay, so what are these? Uh, these two are pro liners, and this one is a brand new selector panel. I'm going to get into this in a second. Uh, but basically, what I can do is I can do log projectiles. I'm also going to put blocks up at the top here so that the pro can collide. If it doesn't fall back down. And you'll see why I do that after. So I can throw in the pearl. Uh, in this one, it gets bounced up uh, twice by this piston. Then the last ones, and then this one. Also, I forgot to... Oh, wait, I was already subscribed to projectiles. Right, let's do that one more time. Okay, so there we go. Uh, so there was the first one. Uh, and now let's go check out the second one. Here's the second one. And here you can see that it only bounces once and it bounces directly onto this line. So this one's a little bit faster. Nice for return cadence. Anyways, you'll notice that one thing that they have in common is this number. So it's 0.34881785366, so on and so forth. This is a really nice number, and I'm going to explain why. When the pearl comes here, it is at almost the perfect uh, height. And it's not at the perfect, I can tell you that from proof, uh, which I'll go over later. Uh, but it's pretty much almost at the perfect acceleration to only go slightly up, but also has almost no... Uh, upward acceleration from the TNT that would be in these corners. So each corner here, uh, if you're doing this for like a, a 420 FTL or any kind of FTL really, uh, if you line the TNT in the corners using the fences, uh, it'll still work out properly. So uh, you can see here this one is a uh, 123 game tick aligner, which is still really fast. Uh, but then there's also this one, which is the 180... What is this? 185. So yeah, this one's still slightly faster, but this one was mainly built for uh, FTLs and those sorts of things. So the only real difference is that instead of bouncing this one uh, twice, we only bounce it once here. So you can see uh, here we only have just this line running into this block, but on this one we also have a second line here. Uh, and also these delays are slightly different. Also, I forgot to do this in the Matic, but you can also change these repeaters to like not require as many. Like, for instance, you can, uh, they tick that more and then take out one repeater or something. Okay, so that's pretty much how those work. Uh, as I said, you can see their exact ticks that you would want to explode these in. We can also see the multi-shot. So one thing that I did with the multi-shot is I added a cud base system for detection. Uh, so here it is in the slow aligner. You can see it goes all the way down, then bounces back up. That's just the best way that I found to do it with that type of multi shot. And there you go. It collides with the block and it has that exact same height. Uh, the, I'm not even going to do this one because it does the exact same thing. Uh, so here we have a bunch of systems that are basically implemented for a, an actual FTL. So here there's like the locking system to lock a player in place. For instance, on return cannons, you probably wouldn't even need that. Uh, but there's some other small things, like, what is there? There's also this wire, so this is the trunk loading wire. Uh, this isn't pushing it to the ground because, yeah. Also, this one needs a resonant block, okay. So, those aren't pushing it to the ground because, obviously, they had a block below. But that doesn't really matter. So, here's a trunk loading wire in case you want to take an output saying that, like, uh, multi-shot has been triggered or whatever, or, like, you're about to teleport something. Uh, there's uh, a slight delay that you need on this. Uh, also, just in case you actually want to see how you would exactly wire this FTL into uh, an F uh, a pro cannon, uh, Chez, who is someone who I've worked with for a very long time, uh, recently designed a new FTL with my aligner. Uh, it's called the 621 FTL, so I don't know if it's already up on her channel, but definitely go check it out. I'll leave her channel in the description. And once that video is also posted, I'll post that in the description. 
All right, so the last thing I want to go over is this uh, new display. So this display is really nice because it has six high, but it also has a very nice GUI. So we're using Trapdoor GUI in order to... Oh wait, what happened here? Um... Okay, yeah. Sorry, I just didn't select the vertical axis before. Okay, so here you can see it's also pretty much spam proof. It's like you can still spam it if you really tried, but everything is pretty much fixable from the panel. Uh, also, this one is kind of bad if you also spam. Uh, it's not going to break or anything, it's just this might get stuck at the bottom. You could also add just like a, a really basic safety reset into this. And then, yeah, so once you pull that piston up, you can just click another trapdoor. Uh, I think that's also on both sides, so yeah, here you would also need one. Uh, but an another really nice thing is, once you're done programming, or selecting your destination, you just hit the corner trapdoor, and that sends a signal out to this redstone line, which you can use uh, in your cannons to encode the, the program. So it's much nicer than having the button on the side, in my opinion. I'm not sure about you, but yeah. Also, we finally have six high panels, so that's also really exciting. So now it says, I'm not even sure how many this has. I'm pretty sure 81 uh, different locations. Uh, I know that for another cannon, which I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to say, so I'm just not going to. Uh, we added another system where basically on the side, we had a binary. So here we just had two red lamps that could switch between each other. Uh, and then that signal could uh, interfere with the, with the encoding. So basically, you can have two uh, uh, locations for signs. So let's say here, let's say I could have first, let's say slime, uh, whatever we would have here, two game picks or whatever. Then you would have, let's say, mushroom, which would be one game pick. So you can basically have multiple programs per sign which was kind of a cool addition that we did into this canon. Uh, so basically, if if it's on the first program, it would choose the top program, so in this case, slime. If it, if, if it was on the second program, then it would choose mushroom. Uh, and that was basically a factor of doubling the uh, selector size, which was really nice. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much it with this. Uh, in case you're wondering, we can't actually replace this with a dust here, and then just another redstone block to make it more compact, uh, and that's because the dust would be redirected, and we're using the redirection to power these for long enough. Uh, other than that, though, it's a pretty much straightforward selector panel, and also the aligners are also really nice. I'm not even sure if these signs, by the way, say uh, single shot or multi shot, but just remember that the sign on the left is always a uh, single shot, and the sign on the right will always be multi shot. That's all that you really need to know. Uh, but yeah, Thank you guys so much for watching. I've put a lot of time into these aligners. In case you've ever been in BC with me while I was trying to make one, uh, you would know that as I was desperately trying to figure out how to get this pearl height. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching once again. Uh, and yeah, thanks. Bye.